<laughs> Those poor fools, Holmes and Watson, left here at 10.35, traveling north at an average speed of 10 miles per hour. While this steamboat that I've commandeered is scheduled to leave here at 10.50, an average is 12 miles per hour. If I put it on automatic pilot, it should catch up with Holmes and Watson at my favorite time for blowing people up. <laughs> High noon! And then... <laughs> Goodbye, Holmes! Goodbye, Watson! No, oh, what a splendid day to be on the water, Holmes. Oh, old man river, he just keeps on rolling. Oh, thank you very much indeed, Watson. Uh, see if you can't get some violin music on the radio, there's a good chap. My word, it can't be. Don't tell me, Holmes, an, an alligator that swallowed an alarm clock? Wrong story, Watson. No, it's obviously a Moriarty time bomb. The fiend must have placed it on a steamboat and timed it to go off when it reaches us. Well, there's the scoundrel's boat now. J jump on it, Holmes. There's no time to lose. My dear Watson, there's no danger whatsoever. Uh, what? Moriarty only blows people up at high noon. That bomb is on the 1050 boat, which averages 12 miles per hour. The explosion will therefore take place at exactly five minutes behind us. We've nothing to fear. Five, four, three, two, one. Good grief! How did you know, Holmes? Hmm. It's as easy as ABC. Or XYZ. What do you mean, Holmes? Algebra, my dear Watson. Algebra. Welcome to the power of algebra. Sherlock Holmes just used algebra to figure that Moriarty's bomb would go off five minutes too early. But it's not only great detectives that need algebra. You also need it to work in a port like this. Or to program a computer, design a building, drill for oil, or fly an airplane. Algebra is very powerful, but it's basically very simple. Look at the word itself. It comes from an Arabic phrase that was coined in the ninth century in the city of a thousand and one nights, Baghdad. al Jaba wa el makabala which means reduction and comparison. The reduction that algebra does is to reduce regular math to a simple system of numbers and letters, x's and y's, a's and b's. The comparison part has to do with equations which are also basically very simple. This teeter-totter is like an equation. To get it to balance, both sides have to be equal. As long as me and myself both weigh 150 pounds, we have an equation. And we could replace the fulcrum with an equal sign. If one of us goes on a binge and balloons up to 180 pounds, we don't balance anymore. And we no longer have an equation. To get the balance back, we have to add something to the other side. This is basically an arithmetic problem. To change it into an algebraic problem, all we do is replace the question mark with a letter of the alphabet. Or oh, let's say X marks the spot. Of course, you can do that in your head, but since all algebraic equations work in much the same way, let's look at this one more closely. X is like a mystery man. To unmask Mr. X, uh, get his number, you have to get him on his own eliminate any other numbers on his side of the equation. In this case, 150, his partner in crime. To do that, look at what sort of operations going on here. Addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. Whatever it is, we have to undo it. Invert it by doing exactly the opposite thing. Addition and subtraction are opposites, inverse operations. Multiplication and division are also inverse operations. Here, the operation's addition, so the opposite, or inverse operation, is subtraction. We have to subtract the same amount, 150. But we're dealing with an equation here, and we have to treat both sides of the equation equally. So, we subtract 150 from both sides of the equation. Mr. X is now on his own, and we have a number, 180 minus 150, 30. That's basically how all algebraic equations work. Since the mystery number that X, or whatever the letter is, stands for can vary infinitely, the letter is called a variable. No matter how complicated the equation, you can always solve it by 
getting that variable alone on one side of the equation. The Port of New Orleans is an agency established by the state that handles the wharves along the Mississippi River for the transfer of cargo in and out of New Orleans. There's an awful lot of traffic that goes through the Port of New Orleans. The Port of New Orleans is one of the biggest ports in the United States. And I'm an engineer with the Port of New Orleans. I deal with the maintenance and the upkeep of the wharves here along the river. I also design new facilities along the Mississippi River where the ships dock to load and unload the cargo on and off the ships. Math is very important in engineering. There's a lot of calculations involved in designing wharves and designing fender systems for the, to protect the bridges and to protect the wharves. Algebra plays an important role in these calculations in that you need algebra to figure, to calculate the deflection of the fender systems and the members supporting the wharf. And this deflection calculation helps you size the member and determine the sizes of the beams and the sizes of the bracing needed to design these wharves and these fender systems. The wharves have an elaborate fender system um, up and down the river. Also the bridges along the river and along the waterways that go to the river have fender systems around them to protect them from ships. Now these fender systems are designed to deflect, to absorb the energy of the ship thus protecting the bridge. When you're dealing with deflections of either fender systems when they're hit by ships or deflections of beams that are holding up the wharves, algebra is very important, plays a very important part in calculating these deflections. The fender systems are designed by the engineers here at the Port of New Orleans and there's a lot of math involved and calculating involved in designing these fender systems. This is a graphic of a fender system along the Inner Harbor Navigational Canal. It's protecting the Florida Avenue Bridge. And this is, a, this is a graphic that will one day be a drawing for a contractor to build the fender system at the bridge. When I was in high school, I questioned the importance of math and algebra. And when I pursued my engineering degree, I realized how important my background in math really was. The engineering curriculum stresses math immensely, and my background really helped in preparing me for the, cal the calculus that you start off with in your engineering curriculum. And when I was in high school, I never realized that my math background would be so important to my day-to-day -day life working here at the Port of New Orleans and in my day-to-day -day work. Now, let's see how you get x on its own when it's involved in a subtraction operation. Suppose we had x minus 150 equals 180. This time, the inverse operation is addition. That means we add 150 to each side of the equation. Mr. x is once more on his own. How about a multiplication operation? Say, x times 150 equals 180. Since the dot means to multiply, x dot 150 equals 180 can also be expressed as 150x equals 180. The inverse operation of multiplication is division. So we use division to undo the multiplication in this equation by dividing both sides by 150. That puts x on its own, equaling 180 divided by 150. That's 1.2. Finally, if the operation involved is division, x divided by 150 equals 180, which can be written like this, or like this, simply multiply both sides by 150 and get x equals 180 times 150, or 27,000. And that's how you solve simple equations by using inverse operations. But there's one last thing to know to understand how Sherlock Holmes outwitted Moriarty. That's what to do when x is playing a double game by being involved in operations on both sides of an equation. For example, 4x equals x plus 12. Here, you can eliminate x altogether from the right side of the equation by simply subtracting x. But, of course, we're still dealing with an equation, so we have to subtract x from both sides. Since x means 1x, then 4x minus 1x equals 3x, which leaves 3x equals 12. Since 3x means 3 times x, divide both sides by 3. 
so x equals 4. You can check that by going back to the original equation and substituting 4 for x. It balances, so 4 must be the correct value for x. Now we're ready to hear the full details of how Sherlock Holmes foiled Moriarty's dastardly plot. Now, it's all very well saying algebra, Holmes, but how the deuce were you able to calculate that Moriarty's bomb would explode exactly five minutes before his boat would catch up with us? Elementary, you could have done it yourself, Watson. You're a doctor. You know all about formulas. <clears throat> oh, yes, uh, of course, formulas. Uh, <clears throat> uh, which formula was that, Holmes? The distance formula, naturally. Oh, oh silly of me. I do remember distance equals rate times time. We need to imagine a little chart with us on top, Moriarty on the bottom. <laughs> That's just as it should be. Now, what time did our paddle steamer start out? 10.35, and Moriarty's steamer left at 10.50. That's 15 minutes later. So if our time to reach the point where Moriarty's boat catches up with us is X, and 15 minutes is one-fourth of an hour, Moriarty's time is one-fourth of an hour less than X. And we can fill in the rate column, too. Our boat averages 10 miles per hour, and Moriarty's averages 12. So, if rate times time equals distance, what distance will we have traveled by the time Moriarty's boat catches up with us? Oh, 10 times X. Quite so, Watson. And Moriarty's boat will have traveled 12 times X minus one-fourth. Excellent. And I am glad you made it clear that we multiply not just x, but x minus one-fourth by putting parentheses around x minus one-fourth. Oh, thank you, Holmes. Uh, but where exactly are we going? Both we and Moriarty are going to exactly the same place. In other words, the distances traveled by both boats are the same. Oh, I see. Ten times x equals twelve times x minus one-fourth. Yes, so now we have an algebraic equation that we can solve. First of all, we simplify 12 times x minus 1 fourth by multiplying x by 12 and 1 fourth by 12, so that 10 times x equals 12 times x minus 3. <laughs> Don't tell me, Holmes, I can do the rest. To keep the equation in balance, we subtract 10 times x from both sides and add 3 to both sides, which gives us 3 equals 2 times x. And if 3 equals 2 times x, then 2 times x equals 3. Now we apply the inverse operation of multiplying x by 2, which is dividing x by 2, and we get x equals 3 over 2, or 1 and a half. So our time to reach the point where Moriarty's boat catches up with us is one and one half hours. And, and we started out at 10.35. So 10.35 plus an hour and a half equals 12.05. And Moriarty set his bomb for 12 o'clock, five minutes before his boat was due to reach us. Oh, you're a genius, Holmes. Yes, yes, I know, I know. Poor old Moriarty, to outwit me, he'll have to get up quite early every morning. Holmes, Holmes. I hear ticking, Holmes. Yes, although I do say so myself. But, oh, you, you've got ticking on the brain, Watson. Uh, but I, I assure you, Holmes, it, it's getting louder. Uh, not your old alligator that swallowed an alarm clock story again, hmm? <laughs> no, no, no. I, I mean, yes, but it isn't an alarm clock. It's... It, it, Jump, Holmes!